Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sofia, and in case you are wondering who I am and why I'm relevant, I am a dancer, a personal trainer, an activist, and feminist. Whoa, I am so tired today. I cannot even begin to explain to you why. I have been injured for the past two, well, I had been injured up until the weekend for like the past two weeks, and I was put out, couldn't work out. Finally got back into it. I had my first workout on Friday last week, and that knocked me out. And then I did another session yesterday. I did my deadlifts, sumos yesterday. I woke up not wanting to face the world, and then I did a workout and Anyway, I am fatigued as like I cannot I'm so tired but here we are because I needed to film something today and in fact what I had intended to do I decided to change last minute this is gonna be a little bit what's the word discombobulate that is not the word a combobulate who am I today it's just gonna be a conglomerate of thoughts and trying to draw in from my history tuning into my child my inner child my and my what am i saying we're just going to keep going with it happy international women's month it is the month for women every month should be for women i would argue yes but it is going to be international women's day on march 8th i thought you know what i was inspired to do videos dedicated this month to basically just honoring women just generally today i'm going to start that off with just going into a little bit of detail about the women who i looked up to as a kid who had really influenced and shaped my perspective. There's a whole list of them, I'm sure. I can't say that it was down to these five women in particular. I'm just going with five today because there were so many women who had impacted me in so many ways growing up, indirectly and directly. I'm kind of going into the ones which I really delved into my stan fandom admiration of. Whether it was like completely indulging in their, what's the word? Not in their products, but in what they marketed, what they created, what they participated in. I was always on board with it. I wanted to consume everything that they had produced, you know, from music to films to books or whatever. I think I'm doing this chronologically, but I think a lot of them crossed over anyway. You know, like when I was introduced to one, then I didn't necessarily fall in love instantly. It trickled in later on and then that's when I kind of head over heels. But we'll start off with the ultimate Audrey Hepburn. If you I don't know who Audrey Hepburn because you're too young then you need to sort your life out I'm sorry like I, there's no seriously the little black dress was basically epitomized because of her it was embodied by her through her breakfast at Tiffany's debut she was stellar in that like watching back on the film is so problematic and I wouldn't recommend watching it for like leisurely purposes it's so politically incorrect in terms of casting choices i'm looking at mickey rooney playing a japanese guy when he isn't japanese but never mind we're not talking about that today i grew up loving audrey because my mother had introduced her to me obviously not through real life because audrey died the year sadly that i was born i think my mum was so besotted with her in my fair lady and that might have been the first film i'd seen of her and she was just transcendent she was so beautiful when she donned that black and white dress at the horse races is just to die for i mean you cannot top that look she just looked the poster child for sophistication for elegance for grace for understated beauty there's just something very alluring about her there's something very magnetic about her and that's even demonstrated through her love life and through the public appeal that she'd had when she was casted for things the way that people People were drawn to her when they saw her live and shows when she was younger. She was just magnetic and you can see that from when you watch her act. Shamefully, I haven't seen all of her films, but the ones that I have seen, I can safely assert that she's not the strongest actress. She's not like jaw-droppingly Oscar worthy, but she has an appeal and she has this presence that you cannot look away. You cannot take your eyes from. She's very captivating on screen. She's very captivating in her performance. And I think it's because there's a raw energy about her. There's something very authentic in her performance. And because she's broken, she was broken from much from the war when she was a young child 
compiled if you read her story it's a phenomenal book i actually have it it's a massive book that was compiled with not only her life story but all this memorabilia like photos and pamphlets all photocopied of authentic memorabilia from when she was younger when she was alive it's a full biography there's tons out there but this one is really i think it's called the audrey hepburn book I don't even know. I'm please forgive me today. I'm so tired. She was extremely fundamental in my appreciation and admiration for women just generally, but also with her humanitarian work when she became a UNICEF ambassador and was doing work directly with children in impoverished areas who were suffering from starvation as well as poverty and lack of hygiene. It's because she had experienced herself uh, times of rationing, times of starvation because of the time in the war. You can just see she's got this massive heart to have wanted to give back. She'd been through that trauma herself. She'd been through those experiences and she wanted to give back. She'd managed to establish herself a platform in which she could actually do transformative and affirmative work. And that is seen through her final years as working in UNICEF as an ambassador before she passed away and in and, and neglecting her own health to help others. So big up to Audrey Hepburn. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal role model for so many people around the world, not just girls and women, but people just in general. Amazing, definitely worth checking her out. I don't think there's anyone that can really compare to her. The second one that was highly influential in terms of embracing myself and my, my authenticity and being just real with who I am was Nelly Furtado. Nelly Furtado, you all know her from the I'm Like a Bird song. That was obviously a jam back in the day, but the songs that really got to me, the hit singles that got to me were on the radio, Remember the Days? Like, that is a damn good song. The video was so good. And Turn Off the Light was a freaking bop. What really drew me about her was, first off, she wasn't conventionally white. So to me, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, kind of era, Mandy Moore, kind of era where everyone was blonde and like super high school, young, all American girl aesthetic. Nelly Furtado being Portuguese, Canadian, she had a different look. She never tried to change that. She never tried to modify that. From the very outset, from the get go, you got what you, you, you got what you saw. God, I cannot talk today. She was just very authentic in her presentation of herself. She was very down to earth. She didn't wear the glitzy glamour outfit. She didn't wear glitter. You see those first videos of Turn Off The Light, of I'm Like A Bird, of On The Radio, Remember The Days. She was just like in basic top and jeans. That was the look. That was early 2000s. It was unstated. It was basic, but it was so relatable. And that's, that's something that I loved about her. And I think that because she wasn't your typical white girl, to me that appealed because I was like, huh, you're not like, you're not English. You're not American. You're not white. I see you. I see you. Representation is so important, especially as a young girl. And I didn't even realize how important it was until I reflected on the women that I'm going to illustrate today but also the women that were presented and marketed to us as like beacons of beauty and beacons of goals I guess this is pre Instagram era this is pre social media era where we weren't exposed to anything besides those tabloid magazines beauty magazines MTV television do y'all know what that is do you know what a television is? Because I know a lot of you are probably watching things on your iPads, on your laptops, on your phones. TVs are literally there just for Netflix. Like this was pre that, you know, you didn't get to pick what you wanted to watch unless you bought a movie or you bought a ticket to a cinema. Like you, you really didn't have much option besides that. You saw what was on television. You could tune in whenever you knew that it was a show you wanted to watch. That was it. Nelly Furtado was just kind of unconventional. She broke the mold. Even her music style was very different to the music that you would hear. It was highly influenced from all sorts of genres. It was kind of pop, but it wasn't. You could hear elements of world music in there. She was very, very influenced. She drew a lot of inspiration from world music, and you can hear that. You can hear through the instrumentation of her tracks. You can hear that through just the style of her music, and even her voice. Her voice is not of a vocal ability to that of Christina Aguilera or Whitney Houston or whatever. She's kind of a little bit nasally, a little bit different. I just love her. I just loved her growing up. And obviously when she transitioned into a second album, it was a little bit more folklore. It was called folklore. It was a little bit more, I guess, alternative, but in a 
a different kind of way to the first album. And then you go to the third album and there was a completely radical change. She went and collaborated with Timberland, but it was still really good music. And that's what I liked about her. She never tried to be something she was not. She didn't culturally appropriate. I think she was always respectful of absorbing cultures without putting it on as a costume or playing with it. I think she was very creative and, and explored those creative avenues and took liberty in ways that weren't taking the piss. I really, really admire her and am grateful for her to have paved that way for me. The third one, the third one, she was my be all and end all girl. Loved her, even now, the highest respect for her, Hilary Duff. I grew up in the era of Disney Channel with Lizzie McGuire and That's a Raven and it was, I mean, it was the time to be alive as a kid. Lizzie McGuire was my everything and I loved Hilary Duff for it. Obviously, she's so pretty. She was so cute and she was so likable and so relatable. She was kind of dorky. She was kind of awkward. Like Lizzie McGuire just embodied the average girl that everyone could relate to. She wasn't popular. She wasn't clever. She wasn't anything particularly special, except in that one episode where she did that cheerleading one. She was freaking awesome at it. That just goes to show that even the most basic people have something going on for them. Everything Hilary Duff touched was kryptonite for me. I needed everything that she made Anything she put her hands on, I needed that. She made an album, I bought it. She did a film, I watched it 10 hundred times. Like, it was everything. She was everything to me. And I think she definitely fed into that whole bubblegum pop aesthetic with the blonde hair and the cute smile and the sort of high-pitched voice and a very kind of infantilized almost. I watched as she grew. You know, with the backdrop of all these other child stars who went downhill. At the time, obviously, I was ignorant, I was young, I didn't know any better, but the, the likes of Lindsay Lohan, she was a little bit rough around the edges. I like that now, but as a kid, Hilary Duff was my girl, through thick and thin, like, I had her back. She had the aesthetic that everyone liked. You know, prior to that was, if we're gonna look at the actresses, you had, like, Jennifer Aniston, who was, again, similar aesthetic, blonde, pretty, not drop-dead gorgeous. I mean, I think Hilary Duff is. That might just be because that's, like, my inner child who just loves everything she does and everything she says and everything about her. Hilary Duff was a huge influence in my life. Like, then she went into music, so I was like, wow, she's an actress and a musician. She wrote a novel. She's just so multifaceted. I just love her. I just, <laughs> you can't not like her. That was another thing. There was nothing ever fake about her. I think there was nothing ever measured or calculated in her approach. It was a different era, considering how now we see celebrities with a lot more agency and autonomy over how they dictate what they present to us because we have those more immediate connections with them through Instagram, through social media. We can tweet them, they might see it, they might not, they might respond, they might not. Back in the day, we didn't have that. These celebrities were very much like a distant dream for us. They were very unrelatable. They were very untouchable. And to see someone like Nelly Furtado, who I said earlier, or Hilary Duff, there was something so attainable through that. There was something so relatable through them, what they presented to the world. Whether or not things were measured, were calculated, were strategic, whether or not she had an image that she was deliberately trying to conjure up and trying to master. We didn't see that. As an audience, we didn't because she was just very genuine. She came off very genuine. She wasn't trying to be anything. She played the good girl. I will say that. She played the good girl and she did a really great job of it. It definitely enhanced when you had the likes of Amanda Bynes and, and Lindsay Lohan who had just kind of fallen and, and crumbled into the pits of dark, dark places. I feel like there was something else I wanted to add, but I can't remember off the top of my head, so we're just gonna leave it for now. Hillary is my girl. The next one comes as no damn surprise is my my one and only woman of all time, the only woman that can ever run up against my mother, Mariah Carey. Mariah was introduced to me, I, I, okay, she wasn't introduced to me, but I think the first time I'd heard any of her songs that I knew that I was able to consciously recognize was Through the Rain. It came on a compilation album. You know, remember those days when they used to make CDs and <laughs> millennials, you know what I'm talking about? They made CDs and they, you could buy like compilation albums. It was just different artists, top 100 or top 50 songs on a CD, different artists, everyone that was popular, who was relevant at the time. Mariah Carey's Through the Rain was in one of ours and I played that song to the moon and back. It was my jam. I loved it. I loved her vocal abilities. I loved the 
range. I loved pretending that I could sing like her. I tried my best to. It was just all out passion, emotion, raw, visceral. I just loved it. And then in year eight, which was when I was about 12 years old, my best friend at the time was called Mimi. And at the same, in the, around the same time, Emancipation and Mimi came out. Now, my friend Mimi was a huge singer. Like, okay, I don't mean like physically. I mean, she was big on singing. She loved singing. She had a great voice. So when Emancipation and Mimi came out, I was like, huh, let me just get this album for her. How jokes would that be? Little did I know that this would be like the start to my journey of being a lamb. Like, I will kiss the grandma I walks on. I don't even care. I have no shame. I will defend her even if she don't need me to. She doesn't need me to, but I will defend her. I will speak up for her. I will do everything for her. She asked me to kick a baby. I will consider it. Probably will. Maybe not. Mm, depends the consequences. Either way, when my friend Mimi had played the album to me, we played mine again too many times that I can't I can't even tell you how many times. I don't, I'm surprised the CD wasn't scratched because she loved that song and I ended up loving it too. And then every other song on that album just hit me in all the right places. <laughs> that album is flawless. You cannot fault it. I don't care what any critic says. Emancipation of Mimi is by far one of her best top three albums to date in the history of time. Like she is just phenomenal. I also think that there, again, like with the Nelly Furtado thing, Mariah wasn't aesthetically pure white. There was something a little bit different about her. Yeah, okay, she had blonde hair and that's it. She had fair skin, sure. Even if she had been fully white, she didn't look it. I've always been drawn to, I mean, even like growing up playing with Barbie, I always preferred Teresa because I felt like she was more relatable. I liked that she was brown hair and a bit of a darker skin, darker complexion, just because there was a relatability. There was, there was a sense of affinity there that I, I could get that I could see myself in that and Mariah was that for me particularly from like 12 years upwards who that that woman is just everything to me she's my life she's everything okay and we're gonna finish up with my fifth one she completely transformed my perspective on reading I indulged in books because of this woman like if it wasn't for her I don't know where I'd be with my reading Meg Cabot was my all when it came to reading I read almost every single one of her books almost every single one starting with the princess diaries the mediator series was my favorite I read Avalon High all American girl all of it was based on the American experience and something very far removed from me as a Malaysian girl living in Malaysia I saw again I know I keep bringing this up but I, I, I saw myself in some ways with these girls, much like the Lizzie McGuire protagonist. The main characters in Meg Cabot's books, they had nothing special going for them in particular, nothing that made them stand out at school particularly, but they had something. They had a small something, whether that was, was being a princess or that whether that was talking to ghosts and like kicking ghost butts. The Mediator series is so good, I can't even. Suzanne is just like the girl. There was something that I could relate to in those books because those girls were some somewhat like me but not really and not not directly she's writing from the perspective of a girl that's about my age at the time i liked reading that i don't want to be reading books about people who i have no relation to and no understanding of i wanted books that were about girls whose primary focus wasn't to find love but found love in the end there was something beyond just a love story it didn't fit the same trajectory as so many other teenage fiction books were about where it was like the girl wanted the guy and she wanted to go be with with him that was played into but it wasn't the primary focus it was kind of dealing with the struggles of being an average girl at school and a popular girl not liking you or like not fitting in and being a little bit unconventional and people not really resonating with that in your school I was not an unpopular kid but I was not one of the cool kids I love that she tapped into that part which clicked with me I got it I understood that she taught me through those books that it was okay to be that it was okay to not be popular because we all have something special within us. I just think Meg Cabot was so great. She was hilarious though. The writing is hilarious. I loved her writing. I would crack up reading these. Like Pants on Fire got me in hysterics at times. Like that was a great book. I just owe so much to Meg Cabot for having given me faith in myself without realizing it that I had more to offer than what all these popular kids at school and cool kids at school seemed to have. It wasn't just looks and it wasn't just scale and the fact of being cool. Like do I have it? X Factor, 
that it's, it wasn't about that. You could just be your average Joe or Jane in this case. Live life to the fullest and not be bothered by trying to hit society standards and expectations. Just be you. Someone's gonna love you at the end of the day for that. These characters still had people, still had family that loved and supported her, uh, supported them. So those were five influential female figures in my childhood and in my upbringing. This was kind of on a whim. I just thought of, I, I thought of a list of them, but these five stood out for me. Those were kind of the reasons I think the running theme obviously was a lot of them had this quality about them that I could relate to. There was something relatable which just ties into that whole and underscores the entire fact that what we see on TV, what we see in the public eye is so important to young, impressionable and malleable minds. I couldn't envision living in a world where I didn't see people or versions of me or what I could be or think people like me. To be black, for instance, seeing oh, in a white centric world is tough. I at least had some scope some room to wriggle in. I saw white adjacent famous people that were doing good things, that were creating trendy things like music or work. It meant a lot to me as a kid. I think they were highly impactful in how I am today and how I navigate and how I fully embrace who I am, what I do and how I get by. Anyway, it'd be interesting to know if there were any of those that clicked with you. Otherwise, please feel free to share your influence female figures it is women's month so should be every month but still whatever we ain't gonna get into that until next time keep it real keep it cool keep it fresh i'll see you all soon bye